It's not going to be business as usual, but it's supposed to be the first step to reopening Texas. We have been talking about phase one all week, restaurants, retail, movie theaters. While this may sound like a good idea in the sense of getting our economy back up because it's been just pummeled, uh, you know, some businesses are saying we're still going to be cautious. And this morning we're actually hearing from Mavs owner and self-made billionaire Mark Cuban. Hannah Davis is with us this morning. Not only is he got business advice, but how he's handling the COVID-19 virus personally with his family. Yeah, good morning, Carrie. It's been really interesting to see Mark Cuban, you know, Dallas native, one of our hometown guys, really step up as one of the leading voices during this entire pandemic. He was one of the first to really advocate for small businesses out of the gate. And now he's talking about the reopening of the economy as he's one of the advisors on a panel for the White House and President Trump. Now, let's take a look at what he's doing right now. He is a part of the advisory team that's working with the White House, really focused on reopening the economy. That group of about 50 leaders is called the Great American Economic Revival Industry Group made of, of executives alongside leaders from defense, financial services, and the agricultural industry. The Mavericks owner, tech pioneer, and self-made millionaire is still letting his voice be heard to the greater public. He spoke to us yesterday. He's a vocal supporter of expanding retail to go, he says, and delivery services. But Texas's next move does not have his full endorsement. The state is set to reopen restaurants and in-store retail to 25% capacity starting tomorrow. Cuban says this does not make sense for really two reasons. One, it isn't financially doable for a lot of small businesses. And number two, he says the risk is too high with so many questions and unknowns that he sees that are still out there. There's a lot of unique opportunities, but when it comes to health, you know, would you let your kids out? I'm certainly not going to let mine. And, you know, my 16 year old, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, come Friday, I'm going to be able to go. No, 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 it's not going to happen. Yeah, there we hear uh, from Cuban as the father as well, which is always interesting to see, you know, the different sides of a person. He says that he believes there's a lot of work going on on the vaccine front. He says we could see that sooner than we normally would with a different virus because of all the work that's going to it. But he says that's one of the things that we need to wait for before the world really opens up. One thing that he's looking at. Now, another question we had to ask him was about the NBA season. He says, look, he doesn't know what date it is, but he's ready to get back when it's appropriate. He says his guys are, quote, chomping at the bit. Of course, we've got the full interview on our website, WFA.com to hear him talk about really a range of things. Kara, back to you. All right, thanks, Hannah. At least 11 other states are planning a slow return to normal, and despite worries about the possibility of a resurgence in cases, President Trump is going even further, saying he hopes to be able to hold mega rallies before November, adding he's optimistic about sports venues being filled soon as well. And I see the new normal being what it was uh, three months ago. I think we want to go back to where it was. I mean, when I... Look at a baseball game, I want to see people right next to each other. I don't want to see four seats in between every person so that the stadium becomes 25% uh, of its uh, original size. The president says he is planning to travel to Arizona for an industry event next week in Ohio at some point in the near future, Mark. In less than 90 minutes, we are expecting to get new unemployment numbers, and some economists forecast at least 4 million more people will be added to the 26 million who so far have filed for unemployment during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we know, obviously, businesses have been hit very hard by this. Also, our school districts, several of our local school districts teaming up in a letter asking the federal government for more money as we get to Daybreak's Ariel Placencia, who is live with more. Ariel. Yeah, hey there, Mark. So this transition from classroom learning to at-home learning has not been cheap. And so you mentioned it, but leaders from Dallas, Arlington, and Fort Worth ISD, along with leaders from a bunch of other big school districts, they got together and wrote a letter to Congress asking for billions of dollars more in relief. And the number they're asking for is actually way more than what was originally approved last month. So they're in desperate need there. Now, why would they need all this money? It might be an obvious question, but I'll take Dallas ISD for example, although a lot of school districts find themselves in a similar position. So Dallas ISD provided thousands of tablets and internet hotspots so that kids could continue their learning online at home. Well, the district has also been distributing meals every week to help the majority of its families get by. So that's why the Dallas ISD superintendent, along with the country's largest school districts, signed that letter to federal lawmakers. Collectively, they're asking Congress for $175 billion in additional funding to offset all these unexpected costs. Now, I want to talk about graduation because we do know that a lot of families are wondering if high school graduations can still happen. 
Well, Dallas and Fort Worth ISD announced yesterday that they're both are going to be doing virtual graduations. But here's something worth pointing out. The largest high school in North Texas plans to do individual in-person ceremonies. Yeah, Allen High School has more than 1,600 seniors, and they're going to be each assigned to a time slot. Administrators in Allen are going to set up four stages so they can hold ceremonies simultaneously. The seniors can only bring five family members with them, and the entire process, they say, is only supposed to take about 20 minutes from the time they park until the time they leave. But regardless of how they're doing graduations these days with everything going on, it is so great, I'll admit, to see these North Texas administrators making sure that these seniors get the send up that they absolutely deserve. Mark. All right, thank you, Ariel. You know, every morning we try to update you on COVID-19 uh, numbers, and boy, they certainly are staggering. You look at 60,000 Americans plus have died from COVID-19. That's more than the entire total of U.S. lives lost during the Vietnam War. Although uh, the virus is not a death sentence, we definitely want to underscore that because people are recovering. In fact, more than 12,500 Texans have recovered from COVID-19. I've seen the messages. I've seen the tweets. People want to know how many folks have recovered from this. Well, there's your numbers in the state of Texas. And we've got some promising news from Dr. Anthony Fauci on treating the virus. He says an experimental drug is showing signs that it can help fight COVID-19. So what do you need to know about remdesivir? Well, let's connect the dots. Gilead Sciences has been working on remdesivir for years, seeing if it would work on everything from SARS to MERS to Ebola. Now it is being studied to see if it works against COVID-19. And Dr. Fauci reports some of those findings are quite promising. In one large study of more than 1,000 patients, it was tested against a placebo. The initial results show it reduced hospitalization on average from 15 days to 11 days. Fauci says that is a sign that the drug can actually block the virus. There were also indications it led to fewer deaths. But not everything is clear cut. One study published in The Lancet found remdesivir has no effect on reducing deaths from COVID-19 and it did not reduce treatment time. But that study, done in China, was cut short because they didn't have enough patients in the trial. To get more conclusive results, more research will have to be done. For now, the FDA is working with Remdesivir's maker to increase supply. That's connecting the dots.